Hello my friends, okay, today we are looking at the Land Rover Defender 90. We're going to start on the outside today, start with something a little different instead of from the front seat as is the huge. Uh, so the Land Rover 9, Defender 90, pardon me, I don't want to step in that hole, uh, is the two-door uh, Defender. It is a controversial vehicle in a lot of ways. A lot of people are not super keen on the way it looks, they're critical of its practicality, and think honestly it's a bit of a relic and i don't blame anyone for thinking that however i think they're completely missing the point of this thing it is first and foremost sorry for the traffic noise i'll go to the other side here so it's a little quieter um it is absolutely beautiful i love the way this thing looks it's short kind of stubby tall um and yeah truthfully I think it's absolutely fabulous looking. Um, it, it, it harkens back to the old school kind of uh, defenders that you get, you know. Yeah, technically you got two seats in the back, but really, I mean, those are for the dog and that's about it. So it, uh, yeah, it is very, very cool. You get uh, this storage cubby thing on the side here, which really is just a, a big blind spot, to be honest. Um, I will highlight the, uh, another point of contention is <laughs> the cargo area in the back is tiny it's almost useless in a lot of ways and that's okay um truthfully i mean if you've got to transport anything you got to fold down the seats the only downside to that is you end up fighting with this thing so yeah not 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 my favorite design element but uh yeah a lot of people are uh, are unhappy with the with the rear of this vehicle and so be it i understand that but uh adjust my hat here there we go um yeah no i i don't i don't mind i think uh i think this vehicle is destined for purposes other than just the the school run and the grocery store shall we head inside and have a look all right uh let's let's conquer the back seats first so the back seats are something that everybody hates on this vehicle <laughs> and uh that's uh, for good reason they're hard to, really hard to get into uh you got to pull the latch here fold the seat forward hit the button and the power seat will get out of your way and you are left with that hold on wait for it there we go as a gap uh it is tiny i am going to attempt to climb into the back seats and you all can laugh as you see fit please hold all right oh here we go sorry for the grunts uh, okay so uh, there we go now we're in the back seats. It is uh, it is a little gloomy back here, especially with that thing sitting there, sort of taking up all the uh, all the light that would normally be pouring in through that window, especially on a relatively sunny day like today. So that's a bit of a bummer. But uh, one thing I do like about being in the back seats here, should you ever find yourself, is that you are higher up than the seats in front of you. It's not a it's like a a staggered seating position, and I kind of like it. This whole car you sit high up. I'll comment on it again, I'm sure, when I'm uh, in the driver's seat. But I really do like that. I like, yeah, I like how it makes you feel. Uh, gives you, relatively speaking, good visibility. These little strip lights are interesting. That was a design element on old Land Rovers. Uh, to be honest, they don't really do much, but uh, they look cool. And I guess that's sort of the point. Um, in the back, it's pretty basic. You have environmental controls for for the back area. Individual environmental controls, which is actually pretty cool. Lots of charge points, and that's about it. One big thing I did want to touch on though, were the cup holders in the floor. I cannot tell you why, but I absolutely love that. I think that's a wonderfully practical place to put the cup holders, instead of having them sitting here and getting in the way. So that's cool. You do get extra cup holders. How can you tell this thing was designed for us North Americans? Here as well, in, this, in the middle, uh, when you pull this down. So yeah, you won't be running out of cup holders, that's for sure. Ah, let's transition to the front seat here. Oh, this, I'm not going to get this done with any dignity, am I? Okay, and, oh, whew, there we go. Oh, that could have been catching my mic cable. Okay, now, here's a criticism of this car, and I cannot blame anyone for being angry about this. So you slide it back and forth with these power buttons, which is great. When you slide it forward, it goes all the way forward on its own, and it stops. When you slide it back, you have to hold the button why i could not tell you uh it is probably one of the biggest criticisms of this car and rightly so 
While we're here, I want to touch on something that uh, I haven't heard anybody else mention, although I'm sure someone has. The seatbelts, given where they are, which are right here, that gap, look at my chubby hands, right? There is so little room that when you're reaching while you're sitting in the seat, you can barely get them out. It's really difficult. The, the seatbelt is way far back and that sucks because you can, it's hard to reach and there's just no space here whatsoever. Even if you can get your slim and, uh, slim and slender hands in there. So that is, uh, it should have been moved forward to right about here and have it sit there. And that would have been so much better, but what can you do? So moving into the front seats, one thing I really dig about this thing is that it's kind of bare. Um, it's a Defender, right? I mean, I know it's <laughs> in the current market, it's a premium vehicle for sure, especially given the price point, but you still get sort of a, a steel door. You do get some, it's not, is that Alcantara? Or is that like some sort of actual suede material? Better not be, not in a Defender, damn it. Um, excuse me. So you get, but you get bare steel panels all the way, all the way through. And it's, yeah, it's, it's really interesting. The last time I saw something like that was on the Volkswagen Beetle. Um, and yeah, I kind of, I really actually rather enjoy that. I do get the impression this all might get scratched up real quick, but that's neither here nor there. Um, <laughs> as we hop into the front seats, let's see how this goes. Let's see where the, uh, there we go. Okay, and windows up. All right, so we are in the cockpit. We have the leather wrapped steering wheel. It's very, it's a, it's a nice leather wrapped steering wheel. Um, it feels quite luxurious actually. We've got our switch gear in the back uh, as usual. We've got basic, real basic sort of functionality here. There's nothing fancy um, on, the, on the steering wheel controls. I imagine, you know, they think people be wearing gloves and all that kind of stuff when they're doing it. Uh, this is your stereo control to turn up the volume, which is uh, probably hard to use if you have gloves on, but is what it is. Phone controls, etc. cetera. Uh, over here, you've got the heated steering wheel, which gets really hot, by the way, uh, which is really cool. The cruise control, etc. cetera. Uh, all the usual bits and pieces. You've got the dash cluster there. It is, it is relatively fixed. You can't change much information on there. And I kind of like that. It just gives you what you need to know and go on about your day. Uh, we've got a rear view camera uh, slash mirror which is really neat. I still can't figure out how they, <laughs> this one, I think the camera's mounted on the roof, if I remember correctly. So you get a really nice clear picture, but the backup camera always gets covered in dirt. I don't know why they don't just make it one camera on the roof, but anyway, uh, it's really nice. I like it and it is a useful piece of kit. We've got our infotainment system. It is, it's small. It struck me how small this thing was. And I, I'm not opposed to that. I think, uh, you know, this is a, ostensibly it's an off-road vehicle and it should be sort of uh, bare minimum. Uh, as much as you can. That guy caught me off guard. Holy smokes. Um, so yeah, no, I really like it. And you get all your basic environmental controls and other bits and pieces down here. Um, and they're relatively easy to use. There's some extra functionality in the, uh, <laughs> when you hit these buttons and this turns the fan up and down, which is sort of cool. I get a kick out of that. And, uh, yeah, you get uh, various, you can select various programs, et cetera, whatever terrain you're tackling. You can turn your automatic on off uh, there. You have to do it every time, which drives me crazy, but that's the way it is in every car. And again, that's something they don't listen to me about. And all the usual stuff that you'd expect there, you get this sort of cavern down here, which is interesting. It's rubber lined, et cetera, charging ports. You get a cigarette lighter, which are actually becoming less and less common. So it's nice to see that there. You get a couple of cup holders and the requisite storage cubby, which in the Range Rover would have been a fridge. In here, it's just a cubby, as it should be. A wireless charging pad, which works. Come on, come on. Anyway, moving on. Um, and yeah, that's, that's kind of it. I mean, there isn't, you got the sunroof, pardon me, it's panoramic, this portion opens and yeah, that's that's it. There isn't much to this thing. I kind of like that. It's a simple car. Big price tag, but a simple car. All right, we are on the road in the Defender, and holy smokes, what a driving experience. I, I don't know how to say it other than that. This thing drives like nothing else. It is so wonderfully old school. It wallows all over the place. It's so soft. You wouldn't want to go too aggressively through a corner because you literally feel like it might want to, you know, flip over or whatever the case may be. Uh, it is, and it is wonderful. You know, I love that. It's There's nothing stiff or, you know, I, 
I, I love it. I love how it drives. It's just, you can see yourself, you know, uh, bombing along the, the Serengeti in Africa or whatever the case, wherever this place is, in, this thing is intended to go. Uh, and, and it would be perfectly content. I, I love it. It is great. Watch this. You just, you give it a, a wobble and the whole thing just sort of shimmies. It's amazing. <laughs> The whole vehicle just, I, oh man, just does a shake. It's incredible. Um, very li very few vehicles drive like this. I can't think of any other ones off the top of my head, although I'm sure there's one or two that still exist. Uh, this is an extension of the soft ride that I experienced in the Range Rover. You know, it's big brother, it's, it's refined cousin. That was far, you know, far more controlled than this. But this is, uh, this is unique and I really really appreciate so, that. We should touch on acceleration. This thing does not accelerate well it accelerates like it handles. It's just it's big, it's lazy. The power is not overwhelming in any way. You you know it really speaks to the and this vehicle's purpose built. You know I know it's gonna drive you know to the mall on Saturdays etc but it is actually designed to be out you know in the middle of nowhere uh, getting stuck and pulling itself out and all those sorts of things. It yeah, it's, it's, it's designed to be so manageable and it is a really, really easy driving experience. I absolutely love driving this thing. It is a lot of fun. Uh, Visibility's good. I can see where I'm going. I can see who's potentially going to hit me, etc. And that's always nice. Uh, that box on the, on the right over there tends to get in the way a little bit. Uh, and I personally wouldn't have it on the vehicle uh, unless I really, really needed it. But uh, otherwise, yeah, visibility is really, really solid. You know, one thing I should comment on as I drive this vehicle, uh, just sort of through a, nor a normal residential neighborhood, is how close the vehicles look behind you on this camera, the rear view camera. My God, they are like right up your ass. It's incredible. And you can see clearly, what the, the picture resolution is amazing. <laughs> you can, man, I'm gonna have an accident. Just <laughs> snooping on the people behind me. Uh, I'm waiting for one of them to pick their nose. I wonder if you can record the video on this thing. That'd be fantastic. Anyway, moving on. Um, the uh, the controls, all the controls in the center area here are nicely arranged and organized. Everything is at easy at hand, except for the volume button here on the right. That's a little bit of a stretch. I mean, you can still do it even with my stubby limbs, but you do have audio controls on the steering wheel here, which takes care of uh, most of what you'd need. Um, and uh, yeah, it, uh, it, it's, a, it's a very well thought out car. It's very narrow. That's the other thing that strikes you when you sit in this thing. It is, albeit comfortable, it is a lot narrower than it looks. This thing looks enormous, but it is quite small. It's like the size of a Corolla or something. It's really, really not, um, it's not a huge vehicle. Uh, it looks massive, but it's not. It's very short and very, uh, yeah, very compact for what it is. Kind of reminds me of actually my 2001 Jeep Wrangler. And it drives the same, it has a short turning radius. Uh, that's wallowy too, um, also very rusty, but that's another story. So yeah, I guess, you know, I mean, this is a, this is kind of a vehicle of the old school in a lot of ways. And I, I dig it. That's gonna draw us to a close. I, uh, unfortunately I didn't get a lot of time with this car. I, uh, <laughs> being an aspiring uh, YouTube content creator, you gotta sort of take what you can get. Um, but I'm very grateful to have had a bit of a go in this thing. I've really enjoyed it. I know I probably missed a whole bunch of the uh, more relevant and important details, but uh, I just wanted to give you guys kind of a first impressions thing. And uh, and I will, I will say, this is, this might sound stupid, but bear with me. This is a brave vehicle to make. It is by its own, by its nature, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, you know, in the in the modern world and the way we sort of, you know, everything has to has to tick all the boxes, etc. You know, this this is made for a single person or perhaps, you know, uh, a couple with no children, you know, but mostly just a man with his dog who wants to climb a mountain in Scotland. And and that's about it. And I like that. I like that a lot. Those back seats are useless. If you have to do a school run, they are not for you. Uh, you do not want to be loading things in and out. You can barely go grocery shopping with this thing. And that's totally fine. That's not what it's for. You need a dozen eggs and a loaf of bread. It's got you covered. But otherwise, I mean, it's just that's not what it's for. It's built for again a specific purpose um and i i dig that you know i drove the genesis g90 recently and that was the same way it was built for you know a a specific segment of the market and this it's good to see this doing the same thing not following all the trends of everyone else um the 90 is sort of a uh yeah it's a special beast apparently this thing comes with a big supercharged v8 too in certain variants and man i would uh 
that would just be the coup de grace for this thing <laughs> the cherry on top i can only imagine what that thing's like so uh well there you go that's going to do it for this one uh thank you all for watching um this will probably be video two it's certainly the second one i shot so i'm, I'm working on the ums and the ahs I, I promise i'm going to promise every video uh that i will get rid of those until they are gone so thank you for watching and we will see you guys on the next one